Good night. Oh, we like. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Friday, everybody. How are you all this week? I was just uh, this way. Yeah, that there way? you go. Sorry, I've just been having direction from Amy. <laughs> which, which way to go? How are you all? Do say hello if you're there. Let me just um, refresh my page. I was having a few laptop issues a minute ago, so I'm hoping, hoping it sorted itself out. And I'll be able to see who's there. Well, I can tell you. Oh, okay. Amy can tell me. I like <laughs> to see though. I do like to see. Oh, my aunt all the way there. <laughs> 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 Just a little stretch. <laughs> How have you been this week? Um, we've had a lovely week this week. We've been doing sew alongs, um, and I've been keeping an eye on what everyone's been doing as well. So, say hello. Let me know where you are. It's always nice to know who's watching. Oh, Joe's here on Instagram. Hi, Joe. Hi, How Joe. are you? Nice to see you. So what did we do this week? So this week we did the Sports Lux jacket, which is the Meg's Atelier bomber jacket, which is the one behind me here. Actually finished, well I haven't quite finished it Oh, actually. Anne's here on Facebook. Hi Anne. Got a little bit of hand stitching to do. Hi Anne, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. So I've got, yeah, I've got a little bit of hand stitch. I decided I wanted to hand stitch my ribs on that and uh, it was very nice to use some fabric I've had in my stash for a while that I got from Mood Fabrics. Um, so made that. Hi Susan. Hi Susan. Nice to see you. How are you? And uh, then we so we did that, and Amy finished hers as well, didn't you? Amy? I did. Your sports lux jacket. So that was a lovely day making that. Mine was stash as well. Oh, Susanna and Paula were together. Hi Paula. Ah. Hi Suzanne and Guernsey. Hi Jill. It's hi, a bit Helen. chilly. Chilly in Ainsworth. Hi Helen. Oh, hi Lisa. Oh, she's, she's on silent. Oh, okay. On another call. All right. <laughs> Hi, Heather. <laughs> Hi, Heather. How are you? <laughs> so, late, Lisa's just watching, so we'll just wave oh, at Lisa. Dan is waving to you on Instagram. Oh, hi, Dan. How are you? How's things up in Harrogate? Hi, Phil. Is that Phil? Oh, hi, Phil. So, Phil was with us this week. What were we doing this week? We were doing um, the Tunic Bible. That's right. We did the, I forgot what we did for a minute. <laughs> it's right behind you. It's written down as well. <laughs> tunic, tunic Bible we did this. We had two days working from the fantastic book, The Tunic Bible, by uh, Sarah Gunn and Julie Starr. And the hardest thing about that one is choosing which style you're going to make. So that took everyone a little bit of a while to do. Uh, I decided, this is my one here. Um, I made a long version with sleeveless version. And it's got lovely embroidery at the bottom. Yes, I don't know if you can really see that. Can you see that bit up? Sort of. sort of. Anyway, it's got embroidery at the bottom, so I thought I'd make it long. Hello, Helen. Hi, Helen. Hi, Hi Margaret. Margaret. Oh, sorry, I haven't replied to your email, Margaret. I will get. I'll get on that. I've got a bit of admin to catch up on this weekend. Dan says sunshine and cocktails today. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's good. You're in the right place then for that. Well, we haven't got sunshine. A bit. A little bit of sunshine. So yeah, so that was nice. The tulip Bible was great fun. Uh, two days doing that, with lovely ladies, and then first. Um, Wednesday evening, we finished our shirt dresses, which is what I have on here. My shirt dress, um, which we finished. Lovely fabrics from Bloomsbury Square. And Amy's finished hers, so you'll see that in a sec. Mm -hmm. Hi, well. Janet. Oh, hi, Janet. So oh, Leslie is here on Instagram. She says, oh, lovely. Hi from South Manchester. She's re watching how to attach a collar and collar stand. Ah, uh, for the, sh for the shirt. And Joe says it's beautiful, Claire. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased with this. Barbara, fabulous Friday. It Hi. is fabulous Friday. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Julie. Margaret's telling you to stand up. Oh, stand up. Okay. So this is a McCall's pattern that we used for the shirtless pattern, uh, and it's got princess seams. Stand back a bit. Let me see. It's, it's, I've got it sort of mid calf. <laughs> yeah, sort of mid calf length. So princess seams down the front and back, and lots of buttons, collar stand. You can choose if you want to do it sleeveless. You choose the length you want to do it. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's a great pattern. Really nice pattern to fit as well. And you could have it with a belt as well. I haven't, I haven't made a belt, but I could. Ah, oh, thank you, Suzanne. Yeah, I was really pleased. I'm really pleased with this. It was a nice make. Lots of techniques, French scenes all the way. Um, so yes, yeah, so it was lots of fun making that one. So lots of homework in between for everybody as well. Thank you, Janet. Um, thank you, Margaret. I know you like a shirt dress, don't you, Margaret? I didn't have to match the pattern with this fabric, Margaret, though. <laughs> it was quite, that was quite handy because it's such a sort of random pattern. We thoroughly enjoyed the gin 
Oh, the gym. Oh, the gym. It's gimlet. called a gimlet. Gimlet. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Yeah, Barbara. I think Cynthia enjoyed that as well. I actually see today's one. Today's is great. Hi, Jackie. Says Thank your dress Jackie. looks lovely. Thank you. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Thank Catherine. Thank you. Uh, Catherine's on, on that class. You've got to finish yours now. <laughs> Lovely fabric, it is, isn't it? It's from it's, um, Bloomsbury. From Bloomsbury, it's a viscose crepe, isn't it? Yeah. So it's it's quite it's quite thin, but it's got a lovely sort of crepe to it. Yeah, you can't see the princess seams, can you, Margaret? I just I was lucky. I was lucky with this fabric. And then I did the on the collar. I did the stripe going the other way, so it comes around this way. And on the on the yoke, it's it's got a front and back yoke on it, but we still managed to do the burrito to roll the roll the dress up. Um, yes, I'm really pleased with this. I love making shirts and shirt dresses. There's so many fantastic techniques. I can show you how to do great uh, pulled corners. Hi, Sally. Oh, thank you, Sally. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I don't know if you remember, I got this. I got that fabric from Mood a little while ago, and uh, I had in mind when I bought it to make a bomber jacket. And I think it might be about three trips ago, so it might be four or five years ago I bought that. Suzanne's saying she covets the fabric. Oh, I've got about 80 centimetres left. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Yeah, I have to make something else. A bag? Yeah, a bag might be I've nice. got lots of half metres of stuff. We, yeah, we've got a box that's got all our um, our letter of fabrics from our sew-alongs, isn't it? And yeah. uh, lots of lovely bits. We have to do a colour black, colour blocking. Colour blocking workshop. You know what I haven't got? I haven't got my cup of tea, that's why. Uh, Never mind. First week I've done a so long without I've done a, um, a live without a cup of tea. And we were so organised today. I know we were really organised today. <laughs> we we're sort of swimming around, with loads of time. Anyway, so yeah, so that's what we did on Wednesday. Finished our shirt dresses, and then on Thursday we carried on making the Harleen dungarees, much in the Mills pattern, which is really good. And so much work in that. Really quite, yeah, really quite interesting pattern, isn't it? That one. Lots of uh, lots of top stitching and pockets, and there's going to be lots of hardware to put on those. But I'm making mine in silk, and I'm really pleased. They're looking nice. And Amy's making hers. You're working with viscose, aren't says, you? Yeah, stretch viscose. So yeah, and this morning we did uh, understanding underlining, which was a lovely just a two-hour technique workshop where I explained what underlining is, why you would use it, when you would use it, how you would use it. That was great. So. Hi Julia, how Hello. are you? Nice to see you. Um, so yes, and I, I've actually put another date in for that. I'll talk about that later. So I've got a couple, a couple of extra things I'm going to put up for sew alongs, new sew alongs. And I've been keeping an eye on what you've been doing as well on Midhead Sewers. So uh, uh, Mary, actually Mary uh, put an interesting post up this week. It's been a few interesting posts actually on, on Midhead Sewers. Mary put a post up about um, Hobbycraft selling Jules fabric which was really nice and they had some pieces and some fat quarters so if you like Jules fabrics. Hi Claire. Hi Claire. Nice to see jo you. Jo says phew. I think that's <laughs> to the understanding underlying. Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't oh, get on. Yes it was fully booked that one so I'll do it as an evening. I'll give you some dates in a bit. So yeah so Mary told us about the uh, Hobbycraft uh, fabrics and then she also made a fantastic pair of tracksuit trousers and a top to go with them with cat fabric and I thought of Janet when I saw that cat fabric I thought Janet mm -hmm. would like that. Janet's got a lovely cat fabric to make her tunic from, which is really pretty. And then Sue, and then it was because it's Easter last weekend, so there was a few Easter things going up. Sue made some bags for her grandchildren with bunny ears on them, which was great. And she finished a Yannicka jacket as well. That looked very cool. Really nice in that lovely upholstery fabric. And uh, Janet actually made a um, Luna Lapin, I forgot what it was called there, Luna Lapin with the rabbit. You know the little rabbit you can make and you can make all the clothes for it. I think a few people have made that. Fabric got oh, muddled up pattern that you wanted. Was that, was that, was that the, Miri? Was that the Miri jumpsuit everyone's been trying to get hold of? I think actually um, Suzanne in the end ordered it from New Zealand. <laughs> it probably might be quicker. Have we got ours yet? I've got one, yeah. Oh. I managed to get one for that one. That was the new paper cut patterns pattern which seemed so popular uh, that it was sold out. What else has been going on? Jean finished her Revere blouse. That was one from a sew along a few weeks ago from Till the Sun Goes Down. Really nice jean, that looked fantastic. And Margaret, oh yeah, Margaret put up a really, that was so interesting, Margaret, which was a patterns height chart, which showed you which, what height the pattern's designed for. So if you ever had trouble fitting the length of your body, 
then um, uh, that's a really good chart. You'll find it on me so as a link to it. Um, oh, uh, Suzanne's a class. It's a bought myself a large cutting, cutting mat. mat. Did we break hands in the <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so after, after Janet telling us where she got her fantastic large uh, cutting mat from, everyone's gone off and bought them. <laughs> Joe said she's got the Miri PDF. Oh, okay. And Suzanne says hers is coming next Friday from New Zealand. So there you go. So Joe, we know you love sticking patterns together, Joe. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. I've got a 40 page pattern to stick together next week. Oh, well, you have. Yeah. The mood pattern. Mm. We'll talk about those next week. So yes, as I was saying, the um, the pattern height chart, all pattern companies design for different heights. The, the big four, I think, design for about five foot six, five foot seven, and they're for a B cup. But a lot of the independents design for all different heights from five foot three up to five foot 10 or taller, uh, and different cup sizes as well. So the chart tells you what the basic patterns are designed for. It's really interesting. And we also have lots of discussions about that in classes, don't we, about fit and what, what cup sizes we need to do. So have a look at that. It's very useful. I actually printed it off. I thought it was so useful. And then we can always, there's some patterns on there that we use that aren't on that list, like Nina Lee and things like that. So we can add to it as well. Hi, so, Maggie. Thanks for that. Hi, Maggie. How are you? Nice to see you. As soon as it's all too, all too tall for me. The thing is, though, Susan, once you know what, what, height they're designing for you know that you've got to make them smaller don't you rather than sort of waiting to see you know straight away which is good oh this hi nan hi mom how are you taking mum to get a second vaccine tomorrow so that's exciting very exciting hi jen hi jen saw jen this morning on underlining thanks for joining us again this afternoon jen I did change outfit. I put my shirt dress on. I thought I'd change for the afternoon. <laughs> this is the class we finished this on uh, Wednesday, so I thought just put this on today. Oh, Maggie's been mowing the lawn. Well. Wow. Oh, Suzanne said she's got the Claire Schaefer Couture cardigan jacket book from her son for her birthday. Oh, you'll love that's that, great. Suzanne. That's so helpful when we're doing the when we're doing the um, Couture jacket. That's great because it's. It's a fantastic book, but sometimes, you, you know, if I point things out to you, suddenly it makes all, so much more sense. Jen wants so, a 12. You have, oh, to, you have to do a 12 for people have just 12. joined. Okay, for everyone who's just joined. Love that fabric. Thank you, Julia. This is a lovely Visco's, uh, Visco's crepe from um, Bloomsbury. Bloomsbury Square. And it's a McCall's pattern. It's got princess seams and it's, uh, it went together really well, really well. I don't normally wear such bright colours actually, do I? But it's you nice. don't, yeah, that's but it's good. got lots of the colours that I do like, Hennet. I think when I saw it, I thought it was more pink and blue, but it seems to be quite a lot of orange coming through as well. It's good, it? and that dark green I didn't notice before. No, it's quite dark with anything. Green. Thank you, Jen. I did all the little, all these buttonholes and buttons, so the buttons on by machine, that's a nice little technique that we, we did this week, sewing buttons on by machine. And... Uh, I could make a belt for it, but I don't know if I will. I might just look like this is comfy. What else have I been looking at this week? Uh, Justine. Oh, Justine made a fantastic Paulette blouse by Fibre Mood in a fabric with bananas on it. So that made us smile. Thank you, Justine. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I love that. Really good. And Suzanne I put a lovely picture of her sports luxe jacket, so like my one here. Really lovely, Suzanne. That looks so good when you finished it. I actually put on my sports larks jacket, I put the little um, uh, pearl snaps on it instead of doing buttons and buttonholes. So you may have seen Amy did a post about those on Instagram this week. Amy's been very good at putting lots of posts up this week. Mm -hmm. Trying. Nice. <laughs> Would you know, I just can't quite see the, the clock's twisted now. I suddenly realised I couldn't see what time it was. Yes. It's twisted. So what else have you been up to this week? I was going to be making and uh, sewing this week. It's always nice to hear what you're doing. We've had a really busy time. So next week, what have we got next week? We were starting on our sew-alongs. We're doing the Sunday pattern next week, which is a lovely sort of dressing gown type pattern. I've got some really nice waffle fabric to make that in. And we're doing the Till the Sun Goes Down ruffle dress, which I've been wanting to make for ages. So that's uh, that's exciting. That's two days next week. Oh, Ruth's here on Insta. Oh, hi, Ruth. She said, gosh, this time already? Yes, I know, I only saw you a few hours ago, Ruth. 
That's what we always think every Friday. It's time already. Jen has finished her dress and her blouse. Oh, yeah, gold Jen. star for Jen. Well done. You've been really busy. That's fantastic. What else are we starting next week? We've got our evening class starting next week. We've got Sunday co. No, we're finishing dungarees. Oh, we start couture dress couture skirt we can next week. We start couture skirt on Tuesday, and it's the ruffle dress. That's right. Gosh, it's all going on yes. next week, and then machine free on Friday. Yes. There's so five. Friday. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, five, seven, seven, <laughs> Some of you are going to be seeing a lot of me next week. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne says she's got a lot of finishing off to do. That's the problem when you book on to all of yeah, them, Suzanne. Like couture skirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're like us. You said oh. couture skirt. Yeah. I did, yes, skirt. it is next week. Yeah. Uh, so Julia has want... done a so different long jacket for the first time. That she made a year ago. She wore it for the first time. Oh, wore it for the first time. Ah, oh. really pleased with it. Isn't it funny how you make something and then don't wear it? Mm. So I do that. Yeah. Or I've got so many things that I've made and then don't wear for like a year. And then you'll wear it loads. And then wear it loads because you suddenly realise, oh yeah, mind you, if, that's if, why uh, I made it. If Julia's made a, a jacket, she hasn't really been out anywhere to be able to oh, wear that's a jacket. Oh, that's very true. Good point. <laughs> I've got all these dresses and waiting week. for the pubs to open yeah. so I can wear all my nice we'll dresses. Wearing all the clothes we've made when we can go I'm out. I'm going to go glam every time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Susan said she had a week off, so started a Liesl classic shirt. Oh, three nice. quarter sleeves. That's a nice shirt. I think Margaret's made Using that one, Using fabric actually. from the stash. Yeah, that's a really nice shirt, Susan. Um, Suzanne, I'm not being greedy booking 90% of the classes. <laughs> just enjoying myself. <laughs> it is such good fun, Suzanne, isn't it? Such good fun. Hey, it's not greedy, Suzanne. No. It's great. No. Julia is swearing at the living men's jacket from sewing bee. <laughs> swearing at her. That's funny. Colour lapel drove me mad. Ooh. Oh, I found... That... Oh, sorry. Go on. I was just going to say, is that from the sewing bee book, Julia? The men's jacket. I don't know. If... I'll have a look and see. If that... Is that from the last sewing bee book or the one before? Let me know and I'll have a look. I um, have just ordered a men's pattern from, oh, yeah. what's it, the Pattern Collective? Is that what it's called? No, is it Bespoke Pattern Collection? Bespoke Pattern, Bespoke pattern Collection. collection. Mm. By, it's, one, it's one of our colleagues, actually, who works for the Knitting and Stitching yeah. Shows. He started a men's range, and they're all sort of tailored garments. But I've just ordered a bomber jacket. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? Yeah, so mm. I'll show you next week. It'll be here for next week. Oh, from um, the last book, Julia. I was thinking of making that this summer. The last book. Catherine says she was thinking of making that. Let me have a little quick look. Barbara loves the sew-alongs. Yeah, we're going to carry on doing the sew Ruth says on Instagram, forgot to mention this morning, I'm wearing my Makers Atelier hoodie today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't point that out, did I? I pointed out that Cynthia was wearing her lovely sundress. I haven't I worn see... mine yet. I feel like I made it a bit bright. I'm going to have a quick Sewing look these this week, coming week two. I know, Suzanne. Very no, excited about the next sewing week. Bee. We're going to watch it here because we've got our class on Wednesday. So, um, yeah, we always have dinner up here after our late classes. So we'll have dinner and watch the Ooh. sewing bee. I've forgotten how much good stuff is in this book. You know, I got the, you know, it's like you get the book and then you have a look through and go, yeah, I'll make this, this and this. And then put it down and don't make any of it. I bet Julie will tell me what page it is in a minute. Oh. I think you need just a little paper. Yeah, when you when you make That's something, true. You need to, yeah, you do need to step back. You need back, some distance. You? you do need to step back. Oh, it's near the back. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> oh, Jackie's joined. Jackie's joining us for the Southport dress so along. We're looking forward to that one. There's still spaces on that one if anyone wants to book that. Was a jumpsuit in here as well. Yeah, Jen said she used to have the same thing when she used to make movies that yeah. she'd look at it and see all the flaws and then go back to it later and really love it. Um, I'm looking forward to the Southport oh. sew along. Oh, Jackie's first sew along is the Southport yeah, dress. That's that'd nice. Be lovely. Oh, Suzanne's doing that one. Oh, there we go. Uh, here we are. Here's the men's jacket. Oh, that should be really simple. I bet it's a funny little instruction. Page 182. Julia says. I've got it now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we are on a live, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm reading just, I'm just reading a book reading. over there. I'll have a little look through that. It looks like it should be fairly straightforward. I'll have a look at that properly later, Julia. Um, Helen said she bought ages ago a style arc pattern called Teddy Designer Top. Wanted to make it this week, only to find it's size 18 to oh, 24. that's a bit big for you, Helen. Does anyone want <laughs> it? Does anybody want the style arc Teddy Designer Top? 
in a size 18 to 24. Oh, let us know. Or Helen, you could bring it along to the past, to the sewing retreat um, mm. and put it, I'm going to do a pattern swap this year, so any unwanted patterns. Go on not those table. from the magazines, though. Otherwise oh, no, not Otherwise the magazines. Otherwise we'll end up with all the same patterns. Yeah, we don't want those. <laughs> Unless, of course, you want to sell it, Helen. That's different. You can get some money. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone wants that pattern, let us know. Pass your details on to Helen. So what else this week? Uh, let me look at my news. My news list. <laughs> my news list. It's like reading we need news. to get you an auto cue. I know. I That'll be the next gadget we get. Yeah, an exactly. auto cue. Auto cue. Did you see the Tilly and the Buttons new shirt dress this week? It's called the Lyra. I think it's Lyra. Can I say Lyra? Yes, the Lyra shirt dress. It's really nice actually. So it's got this sort of top and then it's got a flared, a tiered skirt. So that tiered skirt that's really fashionable this year. So. Oh, Helen had thought that. Oh, she had thought that. So um, yeah, have a look at the Tilly and the Buttons shirt dress actually. It looks really nice. If you like a shirt dress but you would like something with a bit fuller skirt. And that tiered skirt's very fashionable this year. You make it in different lengths. Um, have a look at that. And then in a, in a couple of weeks' time, Named Clothing's new book will be out. So you remember their one called Breaking the Pattern, which came out a couple of years ago? They've got a new one called Building the Pattern. And it's available to pre-order now. Which I love um, Named Clothing patterns, actually. They're really good. Uh, Claire says the pattern swap sounds good. She inherited a bag of vintage, vintage patterns. patterns. Ah, oh, that would be great. Bring Claire. that we along, Claire, because passions. Jen would like those. Yeah, <laughs> and Jen, actually, you're both coming to the Brighton retreat. Yes, so exactly. Um, Ruth says on Instagram, oh, the teddy top, that's too big for her, but she has made the teddy top and loves it. Love it. it. Oh, that's good. I, I don't yeah. think I've made that one. I'm trying to think what it looks like. They've got so many, haven't they? Mm. We were saying this morning, I think it was um, uh, James asking which patterns we like, and we all said Starmark. <laughs> there we go. Jen, Jen me, Claire, me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Not Janet vintage loves vintage patterns. patterns. Oh, you'll have to come to the Brighton Sewing Retreat, Janet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a couple of new things um, that are out next week. I couldn't find many new things, but I think loads of people had, um, they all had special offers on for Easter, didn't they? So there's not so many, many things to... Jen, I'll take them all <laughs> and give you everything I bring. <laughs> <laughs> the new uh, the new named clothing book is called Building the Pattern, and it's available from the 29th, but you can pre-order it now, Suzanne. Claire, well, lots of takers then. Yeah, I don't think you'll be uh, yeah, think going home with any. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so Julia's right. planning the freedom dress from wardrobe by me. That's a shirt top with a round neck and a layered skirt. Oh, I think that might be similar then, um, Julia. That sounds very similar, doesn't it, to the new Tilly and the Buttons one? Oh, Cynthia says, I would like the teddy top pattern. What can I swap for it? Oh, there you go. There we go, Helen. Helen. We've got a taker from Cynthia. That's what do you want in touch. return? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is quite a new new yeah, addition to the lines. Yeah, and it's always really cool when one's on Instagram. We one's could on do Facebook. a little auction. Yeah. Any months. takers? Any takers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a long way away from the sewing retreat, isn't it? It, it is actually. Swaps. Yes. Cynthia was remi reminded me of something I had seen actually. Uh, I had an email about from the Fashion and Textile Museum this week. They have got an exhibition coming up. Just think, we'll be able to go to exhibition soon. From May the 18th, the Fashion and Textile have a, a Museum in London have an exhibition uh, called um, Chintz, Cotton in Bloom, and it's showcasing 150 um, items with, made from chintz fabric, which was quite um, groundbreaking at the time um, because it was bright colours. Uh, so I'm really hoping we can get to go and see that. It's on, t it's on till, oh, I can't remember, it's on till the end of August, I think, that one. So. But also, the Fashion and Textile Museum, I forgot, I'd also forgotten, have a um, live events, lots of live events that you can watch, they've recorded them. So things like In Conversation with Zandra Rhodes and things like that, and so you can pay a minimal charge of about five pounds and see their live events that we couldn't have got to at the time. So have a look at their website, that's the Fashion and Textile Museum in London. And let's book, book tickets for the, just because we want to go and see a museum. You have to book tickets for it because obviously be, you always have to book for their museum things anyway but particularly at the moment because they're going to have limited numbers jen says yes live auctions i actually think that's a really good idea i was just I'm thinking how that. i'm just like thinking how we can do it so <laughs> stay tuned ladies yeah, i might tuned. actually get to that uh, <laughs> helen says how do i get it to her we i'll put you in touch if that's okay Cynthia. i'll swap i'll do you a joint email and you can is that a good idea is that a good way to do it that sounds, and then you yeah. can just post it directly to her maybe. that sounds like a plan yeah. Like we'll a send a little 
intro you email. You want these things to go to waste, do you? Otherwise you end up with lots of patterns yeah. that uh, are not right. And it's always good to think someone could use it. So there we go. We might find you one in the right size home. You never know. Cynthia said the chintz talk was really good today. Yeah, so that was one. Yeah, so if you haven't seen the live ones, you can see the recorded one. Um, I've always loved their talks, actually. I've completely forgotten. I've got so out of the habit of looking at museum websites. So we'll have to see what the V&A and things have got coming up, won't we? So yeah, have a look at the Fashion and Textile Museum for their events. You're welcome, Helen. Oh, you're welcome, Cynthia. Oh. <laughs> it's funny because one of you's on Facebook and one of you's on Instagram, so it's like chatting to you through the tones. Good your baby's up there. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I found, I found a lovely local company next, this, this week and I thought I have to talk about them, even though they're local. Midhurst Flower Farm. And they're, they're a, um, a local farm... I'm going to sneeze. I think it's probably the flowers making me sneeze. It is. Me. Um, and uh, they do free local delivery. So if you order a bunch of flowers, I hope you can see them just behind me. I've got these lovely tulips behind me. And they deliver for free. So, yeah, and it's so nice. Local business, growing lovely cut, cut flowers. So uh, if you're local, have a look. Heather says, chintz. I used to work at Sanderson's and had an awful lot of chintz dresses. Yes. Plus other curtain fabric creations. Those were the days. Yes. I think that's lovely, isn't it? It's what, that's what made me think of the, when I saw the pictures of the exhibition, I thought of Sanderson's actually. And Jen, can you give me Madeline my email address for the Barbie fabric? Oh yes, I'll do a, I'll do an yeah, email do intro for you as well. Yes, please. <laughs> I need to write down all these connections. Quick, write it down, write it connections, down. connections. Also, anybody that was on the tunic bible workshop lovely mary in america has asked for your emails yes mary, we had a lovely lady like called connect. mary um from boston joined us on tunic bible this week it was half past five in the morning for her and she joined us both days and it's so lovely and she um she had a lovely time chatting with everybody and said how nice she hadn't realized how isolated she'd been and how cut off she felt and she would it would be lovely if anyone would like to carry on chatting with her in Boston, so any ladies from the Tunic Bible who'd like to, to get back in touch with Mary, let us know and we'll pass your email over. But she is going to join us for a couple of evening stars, which I think would be better timing for her actually. <laughs> yeah, she was up morning, at half five. Half five in the morning. <laughs> oh yeah, Catherine's happy. Ah, oh, she was so lovely, wasn't she, Mary? It was so nice to chat. And I think she just realised, you know, she'd been looking after her father and you know all her children. She's got five children, I think, wasn't it? Busy with her family, and it was nice for her. She hasn't got any sewing friends like a lot of us. So, really nice. Oh, oh so thanks, is Catherine. Joe. Joe is as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice to connect. And Suzanne. Oh, lovely. And Janet. Oh, she'll be so happy. Thank you, ladies. It's so nice. I think the Solons have been lovely, haven't they, for keeping everyone connected. And it's obviously we all chat on these um, Facebook and things, but be able to see people as well. Thank you. She'll be really happy. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. She's now got this little. Sewing group in yeah, the UK. <laughs> she was a bit worried, wasn't she, that you, everybody knew each other already, but yeah. only through the sew along. Oh, Phil's ahead. saying, and me. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> Lovely. You'll have to start a little WhatsApp group between you, won't you? Or a little email group, <laughs> yeah. because of the time's difference. Ah, oh, Jen's saying it's a lifeline. It's so lovely to see people. That's why we're going to carry them on because you know, be able to meet people like Mary in America and uh, things like that. People who can't come here to the sewing room. It's been fantastic. Really so we should have a Midhurst WhatsApp group. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> that could be a little That bit. could be crazy. Can you imagine the notifications? <laughs> Let's just stick to the Facebook page. <laughs> We'd have to mute it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then Janet's saying it's lovely to have an insight into different people's lives. It is, isn't it? And you can see their sewing rooms as well, which is always good, isn't it? Especially Jen's sewing room. We, do, we all cover Jen's sewing room. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, I'm, oh, the other thing I was going to tell you just while I'm moving to my demo was I am going to be putting up some more sew along. I've already put up a new date for the Understanding Underlining, which we did this morning, and it's going to be an evening class on the 13th of May. So that's already on the website. So if you missed that or you'd like to do that, the um, Understanding Underlining is on for the evening of the 13th of May. Um, and then we will start... <laughs> yes, it's Anne's saying. There would be a lot to read. To read the WhatsApp group. <laughs> um, uh, I will be adding uh, a t-shirt dress on the 28th of April, so a t-shirt, a t-shirt dress day. And then there'll be, we've had a lot of discussion this recently about making a slip to wear underneath your dresses. So that's going to be an evening class. Uh, start, we'll start that after the 13th of May, the week after that. Um, so I'll put that up. I want to find stuff that's a really nice pattern for that. Yeah, Janet's saying slips. Yeah, half slips and full slips. We'll do some lingerie. 
half slips and full slips to With go lace on the things. Yes, I think we, that's what I was thinking. I wanted to show you how to put lace. You can choose really? lace or no lace. Silk or jersey, we discussed this morning. All sorts of things. So anyway, so that's what we've all got coming up. That's all my news for now, I think. So I was going to do a little demo today. because I was thinking of the sh with the shirt dress. Um, and Jose slips she's in right I'll work on that at the weekend keep an eye out for new sew alongs going up over the weekend so we made this shirt dress this week and um, this particular shirt has a two piece sleeve so I decided just to have I wanted it quite casual just with a, a hem and you can probably see I've put orange bars binding on there oh um, Mary will want one too yeah oh Julie Morris is here hi oh, Julie hi Julie she's saying lace one please oh yeah R Ruth would oh, like yeah. to do a slip class too yeah, I've got the um, simplicity pattern, Jen, actually. Oh, excellent. Okay. <laughs> yeah, That's it then. <laughs> right, I'll, so I'll sort that out over the weekend. Look out. Keep your eyes peeled. Suzanne slips on in. <laughs> well, that's a full class yeah, already. Exactly. <laughs> we got to do two. Yeah. <laughs> that's done. Um, yeah, so shirt dress. This was just, this was a two-piece sleeve. So when we did the, some, some ladies wanted to do a cuff, so um, I said I'd demonstrate it. And when we went to do the, um, placket it actually was part of the um, second seam in the two-piece sleeve but I thought it might be quite um, interesting Barbara saying and me um, <laughs> quite interesting to show you how to do a continuous placket for a cuff um, carry on I'm just, I'm just looking at all the papers suggesting patterns for uh, <laughs> slip for slips now oh and fabrics oh, yeah and fabrics yes I think uh, yeah, yeah I said about Charmeuse this morning Jane didn't I, I think Charmeuse is lovely for slip Anyway, I thought it'd be quite a nice idea to show you how to do a continuous placket and how to put a cuff on a shirt. So Amy's going to come in and I'm going to show you a few of my tips. This could be interesting because I have to be quite accurate. Yes, Claire says um, pattern by Alison Co. Alison Co. Oh, lovely. That's good. She like made it. it for one of her daughters. I'll have a look at that because I've got a lovely bone pattern, but I don't know actually if the bone pattern is still available. So I need to check that out. I'll have a little look. I'll have a little, I'll do a little research this weekend. Slip frenzy. Yeah, it is a slip yeah, frenzy, Susan. Yeah, it's a bit like um, tunic Bible frenzy. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to thread the machine because I forgot to do that. Oh. Hmm. I mean, even when we're at our most prepared. I know, there's always something that I forget to do. I'm going to have to get you to take that off. Oh, oh what's happened? I don't know. It's stuck. If not, I'll get another one. Oh, that's because the, I think this is a very small bobbin. Oh, oh there we go, got it. That's one of the non genomy ones. Oh, you might have some skip stitches then. Oops. Okay, so I'm just filling <coughs> up my machine. I'm sure you're really interested to see that. Why not? You'll see how good you are at threading the needle. I'm with a needle threader at this time of day. <laughs> Uh, Jill says she's kept her slips from the 1970s, some of which she made. Oh, there you go. And half slips you could really make yourself, couldn't you? Really? Okay, so when you this now, this is a scaled down. If the um, space comes up on pajamas, can you let me know, Jen? I says. Will. Yeah. So you have to imagine this is a full sleeve. But I just wanted to show you the top of the sleeve. Because for sleeves you have one notch for the front and two notches for the back. You wouldn't only put a cuff on a sleeve this short. I just wanted to sort of give you perspective. Um, at the bottom of the sleeve you would have um, a dot and it might have a line there as well. Let me just grab the pen. Show you. Might have a line down the middle. Um, it, some, sometimes they have stitching like that, but I ignore that normally. Um, and you might have some marks for a pleat as well. First thing to do is cut up the line up to your dot there. So that's always the scary bit, isn't it? Cutting a, cutting a split in the bottom of your sleeve. But it's the first thing you need to do. And you're, obviously you're doing all of this before you put the, put the sleeve together because it's easier that way. The next thing you need to do is to cut a piece of bias fabric um, about three and a half centimetres wide works very well and make it so that it's at least twice at least twice the split have a bit extra as well so it gives you something to hold on to sometimes pattern pieces have sometimes patterns have a pattern piece for that and it's cut on the straight grain but i always find it easier to do it on the bias 
Um, Barbara, would I be able to join the underlining so along in May? Oh, yes, of course, Barbara. I'll send you... Yes, absolutely. Um, so I will... Yeah, I'll send, I'll, I'll send you an email after the live. Um, make sure your binding is twice the length of the split. So it's a good opportunity to use a bias bit of fabric here, a contrast piece of fabric as well. It's a nice area to do that. And then you need to fold your binding if you have one of these nifty bias binding makers and that's always good oh yeah jen uh, says you need to do the copy it make it class janet <laughs> if you've got lots of slits to if you've got one you want to replicate yeah with this um tool you just put the um binding through and it folds the ends in automatically for you so that's a really it's a really useful little tool this but if not just fold the ends into the middle and make yourself a piece of bias binding that's about 18 to 20 millimetres wide. It's a bit of a nifty gadget this. And you can make all sorts of different sizes of bias binding. That's, um, then you're going to fold this in half. So you've got a nice piece of bias binding. Okay. This iron needs some steam in it really to get a good press. And again, that's not bad at all. So the next thing we're going to do is let's get this really pressed. Okay. Lost the beginning of what you were doing. Suzanne said. Did you? I just put a, I got cut a piece of bias and put it through the bias binding maker to, so to fold the ends into the middle. So a piece of, a piece of bias fabric that's about three and a half centimetres wide, fold the uh, edges into the middle and then fold it in half. So you end up with a piece of bias like that. Now we've got this cut in the bottom of our sleeve here. This is where we want to put our piece of bias. So open it out. Excuse me while I just grab my pins and put the raw edge of the fabric against the fold so you can get that neatly around the edge and i really only put a couple of pins in this pins just get tend to get in the way what we need to do is try and keep the raw edge of the fabric against the fold of the binding like that so put a couple of pins in and then we're going to go to the sewing machine and stitch on this edge of the binding, so this outside edge of the binding here. So I'm just going to line my needle up so it should be okay. And then stitch forward. So the tricky bit is when we get, obviously when we get to the top of the bent. Okay, so here's the here's the top of the vent here where that dot is. I'm still going to make sure the fabric is all the way against the fabric, against the fold in the binding and stitch as far up the top as I can and then stop with the needle down and I've got all this fabric here so I can lift the foot and move all this fabric the other way. So now the raw edge of the other side of the vent can go against the fold Maggie in the... Maggie's saying stitch length 3.5. Yeah. Well, it should be probably... Well, whatever length you would do on your on your fabric, it's probably about 2.6, I would say, actually. I didn't put it down from I earlier. I didn't put it down from earlier. But it's fine. 3.5 is fine with this. Stitch down to the end and cut your threads. So that is now attached. So you can see on both sides it's attached. The next thing to do is you want to overlap your placket like that. So one's, one's going to go flat. So this is the, the one near the back of the sleeve. Your placket always overlaps towards the back. So that's your two notches. So you know it's the back. 
like it overlaps to the back. So just fold the top, fold this one under, so it's laying on top, and then just do a little bit of stitching across there to hold it in place. Just gonna quickly hold that in place there, so it doesn't move. There. Okay, so that's now gonna stay nicely. The next thing is to help that stay in place, you've got your two pieces of the placket on top of each other. We're gonna stitch across this triangle. Let me just draw so I can show you where I'm gonna stitch. Across like that. And that's gonna help that um, stay flat. I will go down to a smaller stitch maybe for this, otherwise it'll be one stitch and I'll be across. So I'm just gonna stitch across the top of the triangle and that just helps everything to stay in place. So I normally go forwards and then backwards and that's and do a locking stitch or if, you haven't, if your machine doesn't do a locking stitch then just um, leave a long tail, pull the threads through and tie a knot on the side. So that is my continuous placket on. Let's just grab the iron, give that a little press. There we go. So that is your continuous placket. So the next thing you would do is stitch your sleeve seam. So right sides together, just gonna stitch that seam. And generally with a shirt, I would do French seams, but obviously I'm not gonna do that now. Because Amy will go crazy. I won't go crazy. Mm -hmm. I just think it's unnecessary on the <laughs> <laughs> Completely unnecessary. French seams is a whole other demo. Oh, it is, yeah. I'm just going to trim those bits of placket level now. So that's up the inside of our um, sleeve. And that's the outside. With this little pink placket, which is pretty. Make up your cuff. So the first thing I always do is fold over one and a half centimetres on one long edge. And then you can fold your cuff along the fold line and stitch along the short edges like that so that when you turn it through I did a bit of what this is what you I did, did earlier. some prep well done did some prep. we were prep organized today thing. still forgot the tea and forgot to thread the machine yeah <laughs> one day we will be perfect I don't know when that will maybe we're better when we're in a rush yeah maybe so turn it through the right way just push out your corners don't use a knitting needle use a point turner just me being naggy. <laughs> um, and give it a press so your cuff is all, all done. So if your seam allowances have been one and a half centimetres, your, cut, your end of your cuff should stick out one and a half centimetres. Now I always put the cuff uh, on the inside of the sleeve and turn it out um, because your cuff is going to be top stitched. So and it's going to be the bit that shows. So always um, put it on the inside and turn it out. Now I'm matching both ends first of all. Now you'll notice I didn't sew the pleat. Uh, and that's because the pleat is an area that, where you have a bit of uh, give, you have a bit of, you know, a bit of ease there. So you can adjust your pleat. So if you've been a little bit out with your seam allowances or your cuff, you can just make your pleat to fit. So as I'm coming around here, pinning around the inside of the sleeve next to the fold. Catherine says, I note the use of the point turner, not scissors. Thank you very much. Unless one wants a hole yes. like mine yesterday. Oh no. Uh, I've actually got quite a lot there. That's quite a big pleat. So not, if you have a big pleat, then make it into two small pleats. But once I get around, I'm going to just Fold the pleat to make the cuff fit. So just pin it to each end and then fold your pleat. There we go. And I'm going to stitch around the inside of the cuff. And it should be just next to that fold. So if you want, this, this is. 
we did the cuff that's very similar to this actually on the shirt dress it was the placket really that was different I wanted to show how to do a continuous placket because most shirts don't have two piece sleeves this was quite unusual all the way around next to the fold So now you can pull your cuff up and tuck all the seam allowances inside like this. And it's all going to be beautiful. Tuck all your seam allowances up inside the cuff and then you can do your top stitching from the right side of your garment which is what you want isn't it really those bits will just tuck up inside there if you didn't want to top stitch and you wanted to hand stitch it down would it be better to stitch it, it the onto, way the, around, onto on the, the outside, outside yeah. so so if you're you... doing a more dressy shirt and you want you're not doing any top stitching at all do it the other way Then you can stitch it. There we go. So now I'm going to, I always stitch on the inside of a circle, so I'm going to turn that through. I never use the free arm on sewing machines. I always think, I was worried about stretching things out. So turn it through and then you can edge stitch. And then if you want to top stitch as well, you can. So I've just moved the needle over there so that I can use the a mark on my a mark on my foot as a guide and then move the needle over to where I want it to be. I seem to be doing a lot of top stitching recently. That was a lot of top stitching so on, much. on the uh, dungarees the other night, wasn't there? Mm. I top stitched my shirt dress as well. I do. I just I top stitched down the front. So there we go, just edge stitching and then if you were top stitching or edge stitching your garment you would go all the way around. I'm just going to do that bit. turn that through the right way so that's the wrong side with your nice little continuous placket well didn't you make that look easy that's all there is to it <laughs> all you've got to do then is put a button a button on here and a buttonhole on there and it's all lovely so there you go so if you need to put a, if you need to put a placket on and some shirts have um some shirts have the plackets you know when you put a big piece of fabric and it's got a triangle and that sort of thing. So you don't have to do that. You can do a little continuous placket um, and make it your own design. So there we are. That's my little demo this week. Oh. How to do a continuous placket. And don't feel just because your pattern says to do a, a traditional like, like you see on men's shirts, you don't have to do that. You can just do, it. do a continuous one. There you go. Oh, I quite like that little yeah. pink behind it. Just on a plug. I'm not surprised in this room full of plugs. Yeah. There we go. I'm just going to move this out of the way. It doesn't slide off this mat as easy as it does when I do it on the table. So, Amy's going to come in now. I am. I hope gonna... that was helpful, everybody. Let me know how you get on with that. Got a thumbs up from Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> I'm going to um, move my bits and pieces out of the way so that Amy can come in. Jen go. says she still hasn't finished the shirt dress she started two years ago in the oh. sewing room. Pretty sure it needs <laughs> cuffs, so buttons, easy. belt loops. There go. That seems prettier for a lady's shirt. It does, doesn't yeah. it? It's not quite so heavy, is it? And all you want to do is have one button there. This will be saved to YouTube, Catherine, so you'll be able to watch it. You'll be able to watch it. 
I'll just check you're in the right place. Can you move that way a bit? Yes, please. Okay. I just want to take the pressing mat off the table because it's always a bit oh, risky yes. having this on the table. Get a cocktail it all over we've it. We've treated ourselves to a new one this week. That's true. Oh, you got a thumbs up from Julie as well. Oh, good, good, good. I'm glad that was useful. And Julia said very helpful. Just move over out the way. This way. That better? Nah, that's good. Good, good, good. <laughs> I just have to go. check for Instagram because it's a portrait on Instagram. Less space. Hello, oh, everybody. Jen saying she bought the Woodland, the Woodford book bourbon on your recommendation. Did you? Isn't? Oh, you haven't opened it yet. It's really nice. Oh, and then uh, Susan's making a shirt dress. I have to revisit this again. Yeah, yeah I'm good. the same. I, I'm really glad because I'm about to make a dress that has that. Actually, the little dress I made last week, uh, I wore last week, that uh, had a continuous packet and mm. I didn't do your instructions. It's a bit easier. And I should have done, yeah. Excellent. So, I do not need to add to my orders unless you're resupplying the cocktail ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't got that in our warehouse yet. Catherine has just put her face on underlining. Oh, thank you, Catherine. The order of really home now. <laughs> yeah, we have ordered some more. Actually, we have ordered some more of those. Yes, they should be arriving today. Yeah. Love the dress. Thank you, Susan. Yes, yeah, so this, this is, is my shirt dress. We're wearing the same yeah. thing today. So the same pattern, yeah. different versions. So yeah. there you go. So mine, I did snaps on mine. I did little pearl snaps. I won't mm. unpop it. But no, don't do that. Snaps and sleeveless, and I top stitched everything. And I didn't do French seams. I overlocked mm. and no, top stitched. Top -stitch. Everything and then I put splits in the side, which you can see there. Um, and then the buttons only go to where the splits are, so it's all sort of open. Yeah, so it's a nice summery dress. Yeah. Isn't it? And that was it's a. Is so it viscose? This is a viscose. Yeah. yeah. This is a viscose from Bloomsbury Square, of course. Um, it's a really soft viscose. It's a slightly heavier one, so it's a bit mm, drapey. It's lovely. It's like a twill. It's like a viscose twill. Yeah, it's viscose a twill. It's yeah. a Spanish fabric. It's from mm. Spain. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, I haven't got a lot of green, actually. No, I might start wearing true. some more green. We're mm. doing all new colours, aren't we? Yeah. I've got some yellow coming out soon that I'm excited about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I really love this. And it goes too. really well. Actually, I was going to wear it today, but I forgot. It goes really well with my cream denim jacket. Oh, yes. What's mm. the name of the new Tilly shirt dress? A bit of paper. I think it's Lyra. Yeah, Lyra. L-Y-R-A. Lyra. Have a look at that, it's really nice. Uh, they look fabulous. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, it's a good I pattern, think, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a nice pattern. pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And it so fit mine fit really well, although I am now thinking it's a little bit gaped there. I might need to put a little dart there. It's just yeah. gaping a tiny bit because I wasn't wearing the proper bra, I don't think. When we did the fitting. When I did the fitting. Yeah. So Lovely fit. And yeah, it's finish. amazing how the same pattern looks so different. It'd be yeah. really interesting. We start seeing pictures of, other, of the other ladies who are in the class, seeing pictures of their ones because they were all beautiful. Yeah. I'm also, I have made the belt for mine, but I'm waiting for a buckle because I decided I wanted to do an actual belt mm. with eyelets. So I have ordered the buckle. Um, yeah. So I'm going to try fitting that. But it's just a sort of a four centimetre wide belt just to pull it in. Ah, oh, the Lyra dress. Has lots of sizes. Yeah, Tilly's good, they, isn't she? She's they got, have done really well, haven't they? Six to th six to thirty-four. Yeah. Yeah, she fantastic. has a lot of plus size models as well, mm. which is nice to see. Yeah. Really Ooh. pretty. I think the skirt's really pretty on that pattern. I hate tears though. Oh, I think you can oh, make yeah. it without the tears. I think there's a isn't there an option to do it without the tears though? Then, which dress is it? Is it a true bias dress? That's it's a white dress and it's got tears in it. And at first when it came out, I thought, oh no. The Wilder. Is it the wilder the dress? The one, yeah. And now I'm thinking I actually really want to make it. But I don't know, I'm scared dress, that it looked like a tent. Reminded me of the dress that Villanelle made in Clingy, which she wore in, Clingy, in bright pink. <laughs> With the frills. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm excited. But I have seen, actually, no, I have seen a couple of ladies wear that dress here. Which really nice. I don't know, it's okay. Good. Maybe I'll try it. I don't know. Maybe I could make it in an embroidery on those. It would look As pretty. another, like, mm. cover over. Yeah, yeah. Look For the beach. Cotton <coughs> Anyway. Anyway. I haven't drink for ages. Sorry. You <laughs> pop in there like you're thirsty. So it must mean it's cocktail time. Cocktail time. time. <gasps> this looks fancy. Some people might be able to guess just from the mugs. We talked about these last week, didn't we? And then you said, I've got to get some. Yes. So this uh, week we're having Moscow Mules, which is, I think, probably one of my absolute favourite drinks. I've only had Moscow Mules as that alcove drink, you know, the... Um, yeah, Joe got the, it. 
<laughs> yeah, the, the, the ready mixed ones that were nice oh, of ice oh. and Moscow mules that were really popular. Well, this is going to be a nice one. Mm, it is. So there are a few with pontoon tears. Oh, I think that's very similar, isn't it, actually, to the Wilder? Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm. So, um, TV. so for a the reason that we have the copper mugs, actually, I don't think mine are real copper. <laughs> Does it sound like they are? I don't know, I think they're plated. Oh, but <laughs> we're pretending that they are. But um, if they haven't had the Moscow Mule since the 90s. Yeah, you see, that's the same as me, since the ready mix ones. So if the reason that they're copper is one, because it keeps them super cold, mm -hmm. which is what you want, and it stops the ice from melting too quickly, but also copper makes carbonated drinks more fizzy. Oh, there we go, science. So if it's an actual, yeah, if it's an actual copper glass, then um, your yeah. fizz will remain fizzy for longer. And you'll have a nice fizzy, cold, refreshing drink. Oh. Yeah. Lovely. So what you need is vodka, lime juice, and ginger beer. Um, this is the one that ginger beer is the bit that you don't want to scrimp on. So always make sure you've got a really lovely ginger beer. I've got Folkington's Garden spicy ginger beer this week. Oh, that sounds nice. Um, but also Fentiman's. I love Fentiman's ginger beer. That's probably my favourite. I couldn't get hold of any today. Um, but this is also a really good one. Just a really good quality ginger beer because that is where most of the flavour is coming from. So you need, to, this is a build in the glass drink. So we want to, don't use Ang oh, Angostura. <laughs> yes, you do. do use Angostura. Well, well Angostura is a uh, an optional extra. So this week I have big my big cubes. Ah. They're big squares of ice this week. Yeah. They're massive. So, pop your ice in your glass. Per person, it's half a shot of lime juice, freshly squeezed. And I know the last couple of weeks I've been, I'll just pour that over the ice. Um, the last couple of weeks I've been straining, but for this one, it's quite nice to have the little bits of lime. So you've got your. They're saying the copper balls are very good for beating eggs as well. Ah. It's it cold, that's true, if you're doing meringues and stuff. Egg whites, yeah. You then want a double shot of vodka. Any vodka will do, your favourite brand at the moment. Oh, Absolutely. Again, over your ice. Just a plain vodka, they're not a flavour. A plain vodka, yeah. Ooh, that was a bit cool. Did I tell you that on Sunday brunch last week they did gimlets? Yeah. I so think they're copying us on they're Sunday brunch. Us. Yeah, they are. It's obviously somebody from they, Channel 4 watching yeah. us. If they do Moscow Mules this week, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then you simply top it with ginger beer. There is no frills to this. You can make it in big jugs. It always works well in jugs to serve at parties. Um, but that is pretty much it. It's supposed to be about 80 to 100 mils of ginger beer. So I probably put way too much, but whatever. Um, but it's to your taste. So I've got copper straws as well. Nice. And a wedge of lime. Just to pop in there to give it yeah, a bit more cool. lininess. And there you go. Angostura, you just and then the Angostura open. is um, optional if people like it. Instagram influence that stuff. We're influencers <laughs> now. Yeah, you know. uh, just a couple of drops of Angostura. You could pop it onto the lime or just onto the ice. And that'll just add a bit of bitterness to mm. the flavour. And that's it. Oh, so it. simple to make. And really yummy. Cheers! 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 You're gonna like love this one. that. Yes, of course I love yeah. <laughs> vodka, vodka and ginger. Vodka, ginger beer. What's not? What's not to like? Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really lovely. Oh, you'll enjoy you'll that how one. How cold it is? Yeah, it can It'll be a pound cold, cold and everything, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Love it. Well, give that one a go, ladies. That's a really nice one. Mm. Barbara Bill. Yeah. Everyone will be ginger buying ginger beer now. Mm. Yeah, everyone will be sold out everywhere. You know what, it's very dangerous though, because you could just drink that yeah. all night. My That's soft drink of choice is always a ginger beer mm. in a restaurant or something. So is, just... that, is ginger beer... That's a sort really of stupid question. Is, is ginger beer alcoholic? It's no. Not, it's not only alcoholic at all. No, you can get alcoholic. So you could mm. use Krabby's ginger beer mm. um, better than the gimlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could use Krabby's ginger beer for a really boozy afternoon. That would be quite fun. Mm. I have copper mug envy. These... Um, Really good. I mean, they're not the copper ones. They are just but they are tin, cold, uh, covered, coloured by copper. 
But um, I got these, a, pa a box of four with four straws for £16 on Amazon. But you can get all sorts on Amazon. Mm. I, you can get really expensive, lovely ones yeah. that are like 20 quid each, but they'll be the real copper ones. But just for the, hmm. you know. Joe's going for Moscow Mule later. Oh, yeah. I know, I'm going to be drinking these all night now. Yeah. Bundaberg is your favourite. I like oh, Bundaberg as well. Oh, yeah, yes. I had that one. What's the blue dress behind Amy? Oh, this is Mum's tunic Bible dress. Oh, yes. That's I'm going to try Bible. and hold it up because they need to see the... Look, it's so you pretty. You can see the it's lovely really. hem. Yeah, like the splits on the side. French seams all the way. <laughs> yeah, that was tunic Bible from this week. Yes. Very so you smart may, drinks glasses. They are. You may have seen Amy's picture of Amy's tunic that she made on Instagram, the white one with the pink trim, which is lovely. So Amy made a short one mm -hmm. and I made a long one. But everyone made it's lovely seeing all the different ones. Joe made a lovely one with black trim on it and yeah, it was great, wasn't it? it yeah. Was good fun. It was funny actually, Lisa um I noticed put a comment on the Facebook on the picture of my thing saying, Oh, I'd like to see you modelling it though. It's see through, isn't it? It's see through. Yeah. It's only yeah. to wear with bikinis. It's only to wear with bikinis. So maybe once I'm a bit uh, tanned and on a beach in six months time I'll send a photo. Love that fabric when you were showing. Yes. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. when you saw it on the stash. Yeah, so Jen you have to cut there. it you have to cut it across the width so um so you have the border at the bottom. So I made that dress the maximum length that I could um to use all the with the fabric. Mm. I did the same for mine because I wanted to use the scallop edge. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But this I'm I'm thinking I should do a bit of embroidery at the neck on that because it looks do something name. because of the rest of the Or you're so thinking maybe grow grain in the navy yeah, or something. Exactly. Just something. Yeah. That's just something. Mm. So that's all we've got got for you this week, I think, isn't I think it? It is. Yes. I can't think of anything else. No. We probably so is. We'll go off and go, oh, I'll make sure about that. But yeah. it's been a lovely afternoon, ladies. Yeah, Thank you for joining us again this week. Yeah. Um, enjoy your Moscow mules yeah, this enjoy evening. Enjoy your Moscow mules. These are great. I love these. I think the sun comes out it's the perfect garden drink mm. that. You can have a massive jug of it. Yeah. 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 I think before we go, though, we're both together. I think we should. Oh, yeah. I think we should raise a glass for Prince Philip today, who very sadly died today. We're all a bit emotional. Yeah, it was a bit emotional. It was a bit emotional. We found out. So, well, all our thoughts and everything are with uh, with the royal family this weekend. But we're going to raise a glass to Prince Philip. Yeah. And we will see you all next week, won't we? Ready for sewing bee chat? Sewing bee chat next week. Yeah. Yes. Join us next. Have week. a lovely week, everybody. Yeah. Have a great <laughs> week, everybody. I was just looking at everyone saying, Oh, oh Zan was here. Oh, hi, Zan. <laughs> and Ruth said she's nice dashing to you. Asda before they sell out ginger beer. Yeah, quick, quick. <laughs> well, they all sell out ginger beer. <laughs> it's been lovely to see you all and hopefully see lots of you next week on Sew Alongs. Look out oh. for new ones. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.